Hey guys, welcome back to NY Sports MC. Uh, coming back with another quick video as all these Jamal Adams rumors are swirling around um, that they are at an impasse between Jamal Adams and the New York Jets on a contract extension. So for, I wanted to just get my thoughts out here. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you get all my and click the bell so you get all my videos. But uh, I want to get my thoughts on the situation. I've been so back and forth with Jamal Adams. Um, obviously a supreme, supreme talent. Uh, I want him here for the long run. I think that signing him to an extension just really says a lot about the franchise. It's going to help us to recruit impending free agents over the next few years. He's also the heart and soul of that defense, and that defense could take a huge step back if he were to not be on it. Um, but the thing is, too, at the end of the day, if Jamal Adams wants to be a leader and wants to be the leader of this team and wants to build a winner here, we have to have some give and take. So if you look at some of the reports that have been coming out, they haven't even got to money yet. So for some of the people out there saying, oh, the Jets are being cheap or just pay them, it's not even about that yet. They haven't even got that close yet. What it seems like is it's about the timing of the extension. And... Now, the rest of this is going to be what my assumptions are because it doesn't say exactly what they're mean. It goes into a little bit. Jamal Adams has been clear that he wants the extension now. Um, what I'm assuming is that Joe Douglas wants to do it at the end of the season upcoming. Joe Douglas has said that he wants to make Jamal a career jet. He wants to keep him here long term. But again, so the thing is, Jamal's got three years in. He's on his fourth year. We exercised a fifth-year option, so he's still under team control for two more years, and that's not even including a franchise tag. So what he has to realize is that he does not have a lot of leverage. and Because what is he going to do? Sit out two straight years and then hit free agency? He's not going to do that, right? So he has to understand that in order to build a team properly, you have to take advantage sometimes of when you hit on these draft picks and you're not paying them as much, right? Because if you start paying everybody early, you set that precedence that, hey, three years is, is soon, the earliest you can get it. We're going to start handing them out then. It makes it a lot more difficult to um, keep people. It makes it a lot more difficult to sustain success. So he's got to realize that, hey, look, if Joe's saying, look, I got you with the extension Let's just do it after the year. I won't want you playing the fifth year option. Don't worry about it. That was just a procedural move. We're making the highest paid safety in the league after this year. Just from a budgetary standpoint, that's what we have to do. And also to set a standard moving forward that this is the way the process is going to work. I'm not mad at that. Like, you look at the great franchises. If you guys have not seen, Lawyer Malloy came out and spoke about how pissed off he was at Bill Belichick. And what happened when he left, uh, when he was released and then ended up with the Buffalo Bills, Bill told him, hey, you need to renegotiate your contract and take a pay cut. He refused to do it, said that he wanted to do it at the end of the year. They cut him. And that's the thing. With, with these good teams, you have to, there has to be a standing ground. You can't just let these players do whatever they want, whenever they want. Like, the benefit of drafting well, well, I don't want to say drafting well because Mike McCagney did not draft well. He got lucky with Jamal Adams. He fell into his lap. And Jamal Adams has been a very good player in this league. But when you hit on draft picks, and it's probably a better word I should use, you should be able to take advantage of having them on those cheaper deals. That's what it's all about. Because now if you pay him early, well, guess what? What's going to stop Sam Donald from after this year saying, I want to get paid now? And then the year after that, if Quentin Williams starts to play better these next few years, after his third year, he's going to want it. Now you're paying all these people a year, two years earlier than other teams in the league, you're wondering why you have no, you know, I know this upcoming year we do have cap space, but you'll be wondering why two, three years from now we have no cap space because we're paying all these guys too early. So it has to be some give and take. Uh, I hope that maybe they can start talking about dollars and cents and then maybe if Jamal sees that they're willing to meet him where he wants to be financially and he just says, hey, I got to play out this one year because it's for the betterment of the team moving forward, you know, maybe it helps to rebuild that relationship a little bit, but that's where I'm at. I mean, he wants to talk a lot about the team, and I understand you never want to get in the way of people and that money, but the thing is, like, are you not making enough money to support you and your family? Like, come on, like, we're in a crisis right now where people can't even afford to pay their bills, right? So let's be grateful for what we have, and 
you signed a deal, right? You signed a four-year deal with an option for a fifth. Why can't you at least play out to four years? So it, it's crazy. Like, it, it actually has me back to, and it's funny, but it has me back to an Adam Sandler quote from, uh, oh, why can't I think of the movie now? Mr. Deeds, when, when the quarterback from the Jets comes in, right? And uh, he's saying he wants to renegotiate or he ain't playing. And he says, well, if you play worse, can I renegotiate and pay you less? So it's like, you know, the thing is the players want, they want, they want, but they don't ever want to give, right? So it's, it's a give and take, man. I'm just saying this day and age, these athletes are so much different than they were back in the day. The report just recently came out. Uh, well, actually, Curtis Martin came out and said how he played that year with a torn MCL, um, the year he led the league in rushing. For half the year, it was torn, and the doctors were telling him to sit out, and he, he said no because his mindset was, and it was from the great Bill Parcells that told him this, when you come out of that hole, you don't know who's going in there. And that's how it was. Like Back in the day, it was like, hey, I don't want to give up any snaps because I don't want to lose my job. And they had that fear in them. And also, so for that same reason, they wouldn't go out and say, hey, pay me more when they still got two years left in my contract. It was that fear that you're going to be replaced and you're expendable. And that's the thing with the, the athletes these days. I mean, Jamal Adams is, you know, the best safety in the league. So I understand replacing him is not easy. So I'm not trying to say, hey, he's easily replaceable. But the thing is, you have to have that mindset. Like, now the players, they want everything. They get hurt. They sit out for every little thing. They come back. They expect their job back. They get upset when they don't get their job back. Right? And I'm not saying Jamal. I'm just saying players in the league now at this point. So it's like, look, I, I like that Joe Douglas is drawing the line. Uh, I want Jamal here long term. But again, I'm not going to just bend over for Jamal and say, sure, anything you want. Uh, it's just like, you know, I got two kids, right? I don't know how many of you guys that watch got kids, but if you if you just let them do whatever they want, they're going to continue to push the limits. They're going to continue to do whatever they want, and you're going to lose all control. And that's the same thing here. Like, you let these players dictate everything, and then you're not even running the organization anymore. And, and that's where I'm really at. Again, to recap, I want them all here forever. I just hope that they can be reasonable and meet in the middle and say, hey, look, we'll make you the highest paid safety, but we're going to do it after this year. I think that's a reasonable compromise for them. So hopefully they can get to that. Like I said, Jamal is a huge factor in this team, and I want him here moving forward. But if he's going to be like hell bent on, I'm not playing unless I get paid right now, and I want top dollar, I want top defensive player money, I'm sorry, man. At some point, you got to draw a line. Like I said, I want him here forever, but at some point, you got to draw a line. It's more about the franchise and the team than one any one individual player. And it's got to remain that. I think we've gotten into bad situations before paying people when we shouldn't have. And we got to keep flexibility moving forward. So that's my thoughts below. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I want Jamal here long term, but he has to be reasonable throughout this. He wants to be a leader of his team. Show that you're a leader. Do something for the team, help the team, wait the one year, and then take your money, and, and let's keep this thing moving. Let's build this thing. We're moving in the right direction. I believe in Joe Douglas. Jamal, stay around, man. Don't miss out on this, this rise from the Jets. And as always, man, jet up.